you know, got a lot to be uh, thankful for here, you know, health, family. So I hope everybody has a good Thanksgiving. Um, you know, I'm just really appreciative of my family, my wife, my kids. My wife does a lot behind the scenes. And, uh, you know, Lucas. from that standpoint, uh, you know, I appreciate her a lot. So um, it has been such a long time since I've made news content for this channel. And for the most part, the primary reason is there wasn't anything newsworthy that came out after the trade deadline. So for the most part, we decided to stop until something newsworthy came out and we focused on more on NFL history, which by the way, let us know what else in NFL history you'd like us to cover on this channel. We were about to release a video on why Dan Marino never won a Super Bowl, but a certain legendary YouTube channel beat us to the punch. No, like seriously, we finished like 12 out of like the 20 minutes of the video and well, they uploaded theirs two days ago and I don't really like copying other people's content, so we never uploaded it. But this morning, the NFL was shaken up by a pretty remarkable move and a very disappointed fan base once again has hope. So what's going on guys? Your boy Mike here. It's been a minute since I came out with a news video and before we get to the content, please do your boy a favor and sack that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Consider subscribing and turning on our notifications to get the latest and greatest NFL news and NFL content straight to your devices. And if you want to go the extra mile to support us further, we also have channel memberships. And if you want to reach out and suggest other content for us to do, well, I have a Twitter and Instagram in the description down below. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Well, let's start with the Matt Patricia part of it, because my understanding was if they lost on Thanksgiving, which obviously they didn't, in really pretty horrific fashion to the Houston Texans with the entire country watching, watching, if that happened, then Matt Patricia was surely going to be fired. We knew that going into the game, talked about it on game day morning, just how important that game was for Matt Patricia. Then they went out and really had no answer for several things that the Texans did have also had all sorts of turnovers. It did not go well, and really then it was just a matter of time. Clearly at that point, Matt Patricia was not going to be the Lions head coach any longer. It was really just a matter of was the organization going to fire him on Friday or were they going to fire him at some point going forward before the next game week. They decided to do it uh, earlier today in an announcement really just just a couple minutes ago. Uh, he was a defensive coach. They never really played great on defense. And, and you know, Matt Patricia came in and really tried to change the culture of that place. Did a lot of really good things as far as the infrastructure. It just never translated to wins. And, and even this year, when I know he won over the players and was uh, certainly someone the locker room respected, it still just didn't lead to wins. That's the Matt Patricia part of it. The Bob Quinn part of it is a little more surprising. He, he also kind of filled in the infrastructure here, fixed some scouting issues that the team has had, had that the team had, worked on their processes in a way uh, that was really pretty impressive considering where it was. So inside the building, he did a lot of really good things, uh, but he also was instrumental in bringing in Matt Patricia, who is his good friend. The two thought alike on a lot of things, were in lockstep on several personnel decisions. And even though the organization evaluated them separately, it seems like it was just hard to get over the fact that they fired Jim Caldwell to bring a new kind of winning to the organization, and really none of it happened. So in the end, a total house cleaning for the Detroit Lions earlier this afternoon. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Guys, the Detroit Lions have been through a lot over the past two decades. The earliest part of the Lions' misfortunes that I remember was drafting multiple draft busts in the early part of the 2000s. Literally, starting in 2002, they drafted Joey Harrington with the number three overall pick. And then in 2003, they drafted the late Charles Rogers, literally a pick before Andre Johnson. I'm Charles Rogers. I had 68 catches and 13 touchdowns. Sing it! I'm Charles Rogers. I Sing it! I'm Charles Rogers. I had 68 catches and 13 touchdowns. I'm Charles Rogers. I had 68 catches. And <laughs> Welcome to the big time, Ruck. Speaking of which, guys, we are releasing a video on Andre Johnson's fight with Cortland Finnegan this week, so keep your eyes out for that. Then in 2004, another wide receiver draft bust in Roy Williams. 
And honestly, this streak continued until 2007 when they drafted Calvin Johnson. And then they went ahead and they pretty much wasted the guy's career. But, and his career went on to be fairly excellent when you take account his individual statistics. But when you look back at his accomplishments as a member of a football team, well, Detroit literally burnt him out so badly that not only did Calvin Johnson retire prematurely, but he doesn't even want to watch football games anymore. He hates the sport at this point. Well, you see, the Detroit Lions did luck out in some ways. Drafting Matthew Stafford, I believe, is one of the better picks that they made over the past decade. And he's a player that I always thought had tremendous potential. He can make any throw that you could ask from a quarterback. He's fantastic at reading defenses. But here's the problem. Just as they did to Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson, the Detroit Lions failed Matthew Stafford miserably. And believe me, they tried multiple approaches, hiring Jim Schwartz in the earlier part of his career to make his team a little bit more defensive minded and relying on Matthew Stafford to carry the offense. It did work in a season or two, but it didn't really work the latter part of Schwartz's career. And then Jim Schwartz got fired. Then they decided, hey, maybe we should get an offensive minded head coach for Matthew Stafford to, I don't know, make his life a little easier. And they did that with Jim Caldwell, and well, that didn't really work as much as they'd hoped so either. Eventually, two years ago, Jim Caldwell was fired. And at that point, the Detroit Lions said, okay, there's no way we're gonna botch this one. This is never gonna go bad for us. We're gonna take a member of the Bill Belichick coaching tree, and we're gonna try to plug him into Detroit, and we're gonna try to make us the mini Patriots. And this has happened many times before, and I want to say more often than not, this typically fails. And for Matt Patricia, this is probably the biggest failure I have ever seen for a head coach ever. Let's start with the fact that the moment Matt Patricia was brought in as the head coach of the Detroit Lions, he was indicted on a sexual assault charge. And this is not a good look when you are just starting a brand new job for a brand new organization looking for a fresh start and you want the members of your locker room to respect you because from the very beginning it seemed like matt patricia lost the locker room before he even had a chance he alienated a tremendous quantity of his players so much so that he alienated probably his best defensive player in darius slay and literally if you hear the incident that happened between big Big play slay and Matt Patricia, you'll vomit in your mouth because it's absolutely atrocious and really illogical to say this to your best player. He apparently, and this is according to Big Play Slay, he told me in front of the whole team in the team meeting room, he showed clips of me in practice getting a ball caught on me or so in practice. I posted a picture of a wide receiver on social media and he told me to stop sucking this man's private. So I'm like, whoa, I'm like, hold up. Where I'm from, that don't fly. Cause I wouldn't say that to him. I wouldn't say to him to stop, you know, what, to Bill Belichick. I wouldn't do that. That's just not me as a man. That's disrespectful to me. And so from there on, it was done with. Matt Patricia acted very coy about this entire situation. Building, um, that's certainly, you know, always the case. And they're never easy. Um, you know, we're always trying to do what we think is best at the moment for the team. And um, we move forward. You know? So we addressed everything as a team, uh, you know, on Wednesday. And I uh, really thought the guys had done a great job of, of turning the page. Obviously, Matt Patricia is going to take that angle because commenting on this situation any further would just further embarrass him. But apparently this was a really big deal. He was about to fight Matt Patricia and Glover Quinn had to hold him back, literally saying that I ain't going to say I was ready to fight because of the fact that I just really kind of blacked out a little bit and really asked myself, did this man just say this to me? And like I said, with Glover Quinn not sitting beside me in the team meeting room, there's no telling what could have happened, honestly, because the fact that I couldn't believe it and from where I'm from. From, stuff gets said like that. A lot of stuff happens. And Glover Quinn sat there and was like, nah, calm down, Slay. Calm down, Slay. You know where it's going. If mismanaging one of your best players on defense isn't proof enough to show you how horrible Matt Patricia was, well, I think the biggest problem of all during the Matt Patricia era was this concept of him being this fake defensive guru. So for those of you guys that don't know, expected points added is a way you can measure your offense's efficiency and ability to generate points on a game-to-game -game basis. The way they measure this value is by calculating the expected points of the down, the distance, and the field position situation at the start of a play and contrasting it with the situation at the end of a play. And if you look at Matt Patricia's EPA during the 2020 season, his offense is currently 22nd. And you might be thinking, okay, that's to be expected because he's a defensive genius, but his defense is last. 
And when you hire a coach that is supposed to be a defensive genius and he alienates your best defensive player. And currently, by the way, I hope this doesn't end up happening. I never wish horribly upon any player, but the rookie sensation that he drafted to potentially replace his star player ends up looking like he's about to trend towards draft bus territory. That's when you need to punt on Matt Patricia and try to bring on someone else. So who is someone else? Well, ladies and gentlemen, someone else might be significantly better than Matt Patricia. And the someone else that you guys got actually has a promising track record because the interim head coach for the Detroit Lions for the rest of the year is Daryl Bavell. And for those of you guys that don't know, Daryl Bavell was the offensive coordinator of the Seattle Seahawks from 2011 when Russell Wilson started taking snaps under center all the way to 2018. Now, it's important to mention that he did get dismissed from the Seattle Seahawks in January of 2018, and he was the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions during the entirety of the Matt Patricia era. But for all you know, if you could plug in Romeo Cronell to take over for Bill O'Brien in Houston, and with all due respect, Back to Romeo Cronell. He hasn't really had the best credentials during his entire NFL career. And subsequently, you start seeing better play from the Texans as a result of it. Well, the Detroit Lions could expect to see themselves playing a little bit better with Daryl Bavell as their coach. You see, once you get rid of the toxicity in a locker room, and there's a person that understands that, hey, these players are gonna be just happier in these current conditions without the toxic head coach that we hired previously, well, you can expect better play from your players. It's important to know that the general manager of the Detroit Lions also got fired as well, because it's not like he was a remarkable general manager as well. He recently traded a fifth round pick and a sixth round pick to for Everson Griffin from the Dallas Cowboys. And with all due respect from Everson Griffin, he was kind of known as the individual that was stirring up the drama in the locker room for the Dallas Cowboys that kind of caused some chemistry issues. And that's just a rumor. So the good news for you guys, if you're a Detroit Lions fan, is the fact that, hey, you're gonna get a fresh regime and at least you're not the Texans because the Texans are looking to have a top 10 draft pick this year that is going straight to the New York Jets. You still have a first round pick, a second round pick, a third round pick, and a fourth round pick. What's really important is the Lions are gonna have to do something that they haven't done in quite possibly almost 20 years and probably even longer. I'm just saying 20 years because that's how long I've been watching the sport of football. And that's the fact that they need to hire a competent general manager and a competent head coach. If you're the owner of the Detroit Lions and you're looking for two individuals to hire, might I suggest myself as general manager and Brett Coleman as the head coach? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.